I particularly love that you set me up with frequencies and non-invasive and all sorts of good stuff. I actually was um, a lot rougher in some of the other things I suggested, like vibrators, think outside the box. <laughs> wait for it, because um, the thing is, if we don't acknowledge that the recreational uses of vibration are part of why our industry has ignored the fact that vibration was actually the first place we had mechanisms for neuromodulation. So why have we gone away from this? And when I started, um, I discovered or rediscovered a frequency that would block needle pain. It's, it's 200 hertz. And this has been used 114 million times. There are over 100 randomized controlled trials, independent, peer-reviewed, I don't pay for research. But when we talk about this, people are say, oh, mechanical stimulation, right, e -stim, I got it, that's tens. So we even had to make a badge that said no, not tens. And when we talk about transmission of pain, then people are like, oh, well, just for needles. But one of my colleagues used the device to not take opioids after a total knee replacement. And that was when I decided to pivot and figure out more about the mechanisms of why vibration blocked pain transmission. So we're now funded by the NIH for the biggest problem I could find, which was low back pain. 200 billion is spent a year, 2.5 billion on spinal cord stimulators, which are kind of the final Hail Mary path if you can't get rid of your chronic back pain. So I'm gonna to talk to you about why we have um, a mechanism, what it is, and also that there's new information about what low back pain consists of that we can directly address because of parts of the transduction of mechanical force into the tissues. When people have low back pain, they've usually tried about two years of everything before they come to surgery. Never underestimate the power of a bad schematic to change the uninformed to the misinformed. So the gospel of Melzack and Wall gate control is that all these different touch nerves combine together to outrace the teeny tiny free nerve endings in the spine and shut the gate on sharp pain. Now I made this one and I can tell you why it's wrong. One of the things is this gives us the impression that all of the A beta nerves that are transmitted are equal. When in fact the light touch nerves that are on the surface do respond well to electricity because electricity is lazy. And they're much smaller than the giant very obstructive nerves that are the Bacinians. So it turns out in the dorsal horn of the spinal column where, mechano where neuromodulation happens, 90% of the nerve endings that actually get there directly are Pacinians. The rest of them go into these wide dynamic range neurons and they don't actually give you what you need to block pain. So when we started looking at, um, before Melzack and Wall, there was Wall. And Wall pointed out that pain, itch, and vibration were stopped, were the, were the combination. They used electricity because electricity was very focal. And you could use electricity as a pain stimulus because then you could look at the neurons and what was happening with the transmission. So if you think about it more as here come the free nerve endings, they go into, through the dorsal root ganglion, into the dorsal horn where the neuromodulation magic happens. And Melzack and Wall postulated that something was going on that caused pain when it goes, crosses and goes up to the spinothalamic tract to not transduce the nociception. And all of the other sensory nerves are going up the dorsal column, which is kind of a weird place to put a stimulator because you're not getting these pachinians. How are the pachinians decreasing pain, you might ask. Okay, this is really fun. So um, it turns out that rather than just the one little spot that you get from electricity, uh, Ken Weber's lab at Stanford looked with functional MRI of the spine when they did brushing on the back of two fingers. And what they found was it didn't light up in just one or two vertebral widths of ipsilateral. It was ipsilateral, dorsolateral, five vertebral widths just from pachinian stimulation here. So, What's going on was found in 1989. So this graduate student, Mike Salter, was at University of Toronto and he was charged with the mission, find me how substance P is active in the dorsal horn to mitigate the transmission and presomatic transmission of pain. So he anesthetized 57 of the 59 cats, put in individual neuron receptors to see when the nociceptor fired. And when he put a pinch and a vibration at the same place, the nociceptors were variable. They were bigger, they were worse, they were biphasic. But when he moved the vibration proximal, the nociception stopped, completely stopped firing. And so looking at that, 
he was like, all right, well, there's got to be a way to maximize this. So what's the frequency? Found the right frequency, same one we rediscovered later. Um, found there's an amplitude. Found that what was going on in a fantastic story, I can tell you that's too long for now, but it's adenosine is the neurotransmitter that the Pacinians release so that the ATP is denatured and doesn't stimulate the presynaptic neurons. Super cool story. So is it distraction? No, they are anesthetized. And when we put the single unit with 200 hertz, because the Pacinians respond to 180 to 250. So when we put the single unit on, it was about two and a half times better than uh, electrical stem for low back pain. This was enough for us to get an NIH grant. We found that there was a 57% pain reduction using multiple motors and some of the modalities that other people try, heat, cold, pressure. But those single motors of 200 hertz actually didn't work so well when we just used them. And we started listening to what our patients were saying from that early Indiegogo. And what they were saying was, when I got Duotherm, I thought it would be like everything else that I had tried. I was just dumbfounded that I... All right, listen to the language. That, I, that my back released and it was relaxed and I didn't have any pain. My back feels so yes. loose. I'm like really impressed. <laughs> so nothing has worked as the well looseness, for me as release. The Duotherm. Everybody talked about that. I've tried many different things. Uh, Duotherm is really without peer. Uh, you, might be, you might be the answer to prayer. He's a sweetheart. Um, so, so the looseness, and what was really interesting was I was speaking at a procedural sedation conference, because that was my old life, and one of my ICU friends had moved a gigantic human off of one bed to another and retorked her back. And so she was in pain, and I said, dude, I, I make these for a living. Just let me put one on. It's the new Duotherm. And, and so she put it on, and at about 25 minutes, all of a sudden she said, oh, Oh, and they all do this. They all like go, oh, and they test it back and forth. What's happening? Um, so it turns out that there is probably something mechanical that is changing in low back pain. And so if you look at the person with no low back pain on the left, when they move side to side, the tissues, the fascia, the muscles under the ultrasound are sliding independently. Kind of looks like the Frogger game, where if you look at the low back pain, that all those tissues are exactly the same. So one thing that's been discovered and printed in 2020 is that they aren't really free nerve endings. They're anchored to a Schwann cell. And the Schwann cell, if it gets stuck, is going to pull all of those pain nerves at the same time. Not only that, but looking to see what happens after an injury. It turns out that the muscles are trying to stabilize the spine. They hypertrophy. They're not plumbed for that. They outgrow their blood supply. You get ischemia. You get lactic acid and pain from that. You get fatty changes within a week. You get ceramides from the fatty changes. And then you get inflammation in the DRG. And then you get sclerosis, and it shrinks down. And then it gets stuck. And then your fascia doesn't move. So with all of this, it turns out 100% of people who've had low back pain for more than six months have changes on MRI in the paraspinal muscles, the erector spinae and the multifidus. So this is where the really cool thing happened. Our 200 hertz on the plate didn't work so well, but when we used multiple different frequencies and had harmonic interaction, something really great happened. And what I believe is happening, and we've put in an ARPA-H to try to prove this, but what we are seeing is that people will have some mechanical thing that changes, and over time the pain actually is... is we have reason to believe going away for good because we're rehabilitating these. So the hypertrophy, it turns out that there are specific frequencies of vibration that release go, uh, growth hormone and testosterone. There are also frequencies that will cause nitric oxide release and vasodilation. And the mechanism for each of these different things that changes with different frequencies is that they have discovered that there are ion channel transducers that mechanical force changes the behavior of. And this is the thing you will tell other people probably for the next year. Turns out that the proteins that will hold this channel open are named the Yoda 1 and the Jedi 1 and the Jedi 2 because they use the force because scientists are so cool. And there's a Dooku one that stops Yoda one from action and shuts the ion channel that causes the changes that are transduced from mechanical force, AKA, get used to the word vibration. So to quote Nikola Tesla, if you understand energy, frequency, and vibration, you hold the secrets to the universe. 
We are hoping that by using combinations of harmonics of different frequencies, we at least hold the secret to low back pain. Thank you so much, and I'll be delighted to share them later.